أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعض فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا يؤخذ الله الناس بظلمهم ما ترك عليها من دابة ولكن يؤخرهم إلى عجل مسمى فإذا جاء عجلهم لا يستاخرون ساعة ولا يستقدمون هذا اللاف punished the people immediately due to their wrongdoings. He would not have let on this world a, a single creature moving. Allah defers, you know, and gives time. You should rectify your ways and you should be do, do good deeds and you should repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't immediately punish had he been punishing immediately, there would not have remained even a single man on this, on this, on this earth. But he defers till a fixed time. A fixed time for every human being, that is death. A fixed time for a nation, that Allah knows. When you know the chastisement from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes. A fixed time for this whole of the universe, and that is Qiyamah, doomsday. فَإِذَا جَاءَ جَلُهُمْ لَا يَسْتَاخِرُونَ سَعَةً وَلَا يَسْتَقْدِمُونَ But when their term, appointed time, comes, they can neither put it back by a second or a single hour, nor advance it. Then the hour is fixed. وَيَجَلُونَ لِلَّهِ مَا يَكْرَهُونَ And they are assigning to Allah which they don't like. That is the daughters, the subject which was discussed before also. وَتَصِفُ عَلْسِنَتُهُمُ الْكَثِبَةً Anna lahumul husna. And they, their tongues utter, utter lies that we shall have the best in the hereafter. Allah has given us wealth in this world also, and we shall have the same thing in the akhirah. If there is any akhirah, if there is any hereafter, then Allah will give us all the bounties there also. La jarama anna lahumul nar. There can be no doubt for them there will be fire. And they will be left neglected. By God, we had been sending our messengers to the nations before you, O Muhammad. But the Satan made their deeds of the disbelievers attractive for them. فَزَيَّنَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ عَبَالَهُمْ فَهُوَ وَلِيُّهُمُ الْيَوْمِ So today he is their friend. وَلَهُمْ عَذَابُ نَلِيمُ And for them is the paid full chastisement. You know, the Satan in this world makes beautiful all the wrong things. مُنْكَرَاتِ Well, this is culture. This is civilization. These are our ways. Maybe we are gays, lesbians, all these things. And they, they, they think that they are doing this good thing. There's nothing wrong in it. Nothing to repent. Because the Satan has made these things attractive, luminous for them. So on the day of judgment, he will be the friend of all these people. And for them will be the worst and the most painful chastisement. وَمَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ إِلَّا لِتُبَيِّنَ لَهُمُ الَّذِي فَلَفُوا فِيهِ And we have not sent down this book on you, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, except that you should make clear for them the things about which they have been differing. وَهُدًا and guidance, وَرَحْمَةً and mercy 
لِقَوْمِ يُؤْمِنُونَ For those who believe in it. وَاللَّهُ أَنزَلَ مِنَ السَّبَعِ مَانِ And Allah descends and sends down water from the heavens. فَاهِيَا بِهِلَرْضَ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهَا And then He revives the land after its death. The land was lying barren. No vegetation, no greenery. All just like, you know, a graveyard, barren. But then rain comes and there's greenery. And you know, as if the earth, as the land has been revived. وَاللَّهُ أَنزَلَ مِنَ السَّوَاءِ مَانْ فَحِيَا بِهِ لَرْضَ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهَا إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَةً لِقَوْمِ يَسْمَعُونَ Definitely this is a sign for those people who listen, who listen with their hearts, listen not only with their ears. وَإِنَّ لَكُمْ فِي الْأَنَعَامِ لَعِبْرَةً And there is a lesson for you in your cattle. نُسْقِيكُمْ مِمَّا فِي بُطُونِهِ We give you to drink from that which is in their bellies. مِنْ بَيْنِ فَرْسٍ وَدَّمٍ خَالِصًا لَبَنًا خَالِصًا سَعِغًا لِشَارِبِينَ From in between their blood and their excretions, in between from these things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you milk, pure milk, which is very tasty for the person who drinks it. سَعِغًا لِشَارِبِينَ Very tasty for the person who drinks. وَمِنْ سَمَرَاتِ النَّخِيلِ وَالْعَنَابِ And from the fruit of the dead palm and of the graves, of the grapes, تَتَّخِذُونَ مِنْهُ سَكْرًا You make out of them the intoxicants, the wines, وَرِزْقَ الْحَسَنَا And along with that, they are a good food also. Nutritive foods. إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَةً لِقَوْمِ يَعْقِلُونَ Verily, and this is a sign for those who understand. Now, till that time, you know, wine was not declared prohibited. And because it was customary in Arabia, they used to drink just as the people drink here. The real thing to drink was the wine, not water. Water was for taking a bath and cleaning and then so forth and so forth, not for drinking. The drink was wine for them also, just as you have it in the Western society. And because these surahs are Makkis, and during the Makki period, wine had not been prohibited. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning this. You make intoxicants from them. But along with this intoxications, they are good food, nutrition. In the Fizalika Laayatali Kami Yakidun. And your Lord sent the inspiration to the bee, honey bee. Anit takhzim in al buyutan. That you should have your houses. You should make homes in the in the mountains, bamin shajar, and on the trees, bamin yarishun, and on that which they erect, because you know people used to erect some something so that the bee can come here and make a home over here. So either in the mountains or on the trees or what people erect for them. Summa kuli bin kulis samarat. Then, O B, you eat from all the fruits, all the fruits in that area. First loki sobola rabbike zurola. And then you, you move on the ways of your Lord which have been made smooth for you. Yakhrujo bin butuni ha sharabun. From their bellies comes out. It's a drink. مُخْتَلِفٌ الْوَانُهُ The shades and colors of that are different. You know, this honey, honey from this area, honey from that area, because here are flowers of that type, and there are flowers of other type. So, the smell would be different. The, the color will be different. يَخْرُجُ مِن بُطُونِهَا شَرَابٌ مُخْتَلِفٌ الْوَانُهُ فِيهِ شِفَاؤٌ لِلنَّاسِ and this is a cure for mankind. This is a medicine. This is a cure. إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَةً لِقَوْمِ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Verily, and this is a sign for those who ponder and reflect. وَاللَّهُ خَلَقَكُمْ سُبَّ يَتَوَفَّاكُمْ And Allah has created you, and then He will make you die. وَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرَدُّ إِلَىٰ عَرْضَ لِلْعُمُرِ 
and there are from amongst you who will reach, who will be returned to this senile age. Arzal al Umar, you have, you are in 90s. Now, senile everything. So that you don't know after knowing everything. Now knowledge is gone. Memory is gone. And now you know nothing, although you had known so many things. In Allah, Alimun Qadir, verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all knowing, all powerful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored some over others in the provisions of this world. Someone he has made rich, someone poor. To someone he has given plenty. And someone, you know, has very meager and just sufficient to meet, make, to fulfill the needs. So those who are more favored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who are rich, they don't give up their belongings to the people who are the slaves to them. There are slaves also. He is a master. He is a chieftain. He has a lot of wealth. But he has slaves also. Servants maybe. But nobody is going to make them partners in the, in the wealth that he possesses. So that they become equal. So do they want to belie the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now this actually denotes to shirk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has all the authority. The angels, the saints, the prophets, all are his servants. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. He is a bondsman. All the angels are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala cannot distribute his authority to others. He has all the authority in his own hand. Just as you don't, you know, distribute your wealth to your servants or to your slaves. In this way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to distribute his authority. The authority is with him. Al-Aziz, he is. Wallahu ja'ala lakum min anfusikum azwajan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has appointed for you from your own selves the same species, your spouses. Now, man and woman, the same species, homo sapiens, in the same way. He goat and she goat, species is the same. Wallahu ja'ala lakum min anfusikum azwajan. Wa ja'ala lakum min azwajikum. And then he has given you from your wife, banina wa hafada. Sons and grandsons. Wa radakakum min al-tayyibat. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you very provided with you good things. Afa bil batile yu minuna wa binaymatillahi hum yatfurun. So now if they believe in falsehood, and they are denying the bounties and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيَعْبَدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مَا لَا يَمْلِكُ لَكُمْ لَهُمْ رِزْقَ مِنَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْلَرْضِ شَيْءٍ وَلَا يَسْتَطِعُونَ And they are worshipping those, leaving Allah, they are worshipping those who don't have any authority, neither in the heavens nor in the earth, and they cannot provide them with anything. They don't have the authority. What can these idols do? What can the saints, you know, the dead saints do for you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does everything for you. But you are leaving Allah, you are calling them, you are praying to them, you are invoking them. So don't strike similitudes for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah is unique, nothing is like Him. So you cannot have a similitude with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No simile can be used. Inna Allah ya'lamu wa antum la ta'lamun. Verily Allah knows and you don't know. You know not. Zarab Allahu masalan abdum mamlukan. La yaqdiru ala shayin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is striking 
a similitude of a person who is a slave to a person and he has no authority over anything. And on the other hand, there is the person, Raman Razak Nahu Mimar is Hasana, whom we have given so many things, you know, good things. And he is spending from his wealth openly and secretly. One is a slave, he owns nothing. He cannot give a penny to any beggar because nothing belongs to him. The other is a person, a free person, a free individual. He has wealth, he can give to whomever he likes. Can they be equal? Hal yastaboon? Can they be equal? Alhamdulillah, balak sarhum la ya'alamun. All praise be to Allah, but most of them know not. Because these idols or those deities, false deities which they are worshipping, they have no authority. They can't give anything to anybody. It's only Allah who can give you whatever you require, whatever you pray for. And Allah strikes another similitude of two persons. A person having two slaves. One of those, those two slaves is dumb. He can't speak. He cannot do anything. He doesn't have the capability of doing any work. And he is himself a burden over his master. The master has to feed him. While he can't earn anything for the master can't do any service for the master. So he's a burden. He's a liability for his master. Wherever he sends the master, sends the servant, the slave, he doesn't come back with some good. Nothing. He, he performs no act. Can he be equal to the other person, other slave, who commands Justice, who say do justice, mustaqim, and he is on the right path. Now this is the similitude of two individuals. Both accept Allah as their Lord. But one is dumb. He is not doing anything good. He is not forbidding people from bad, evil. He is not persuading people towards the right path. He is not calling you know, the creation, creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the right path. And the other one is, well, he can speak, he can address people, he can call them to the right path. So in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this person, although both are Muslims, and both have accepted Allah as their Lord, but this person is much high in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is doing all these things. Well, Allah is able samawati wal and verily it is for Allah, all things, you know, all the unseen of the heavens and the earth belongs to Allah. وَمَا أَمْرُ السَّاعَةِ إِلَّا كَلَهُ الْبَصَرُ And the matter of the Qiyamah is just like the twinkling of an eye. Sa'ah, Sa'ah, the doomsday, when all this creation will be disturbed, all people will die. That is Sa'ah. One is Tayama and one is Sa'ah. These two words are different. Tayama is the day of resurrection. They will be revived from the death, resurrected from the dead, and they will be standing looking towards God, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Sa'ah is the doomsday. When you know these mountains will move and everything will die. So that is Sa'ah. The matter of this Sa'ah, this doomsday, is just like the twinkling of an eye. Because, and a command of Allah, then, and it will happen. Without any time involved in it. Maybe it's nearer than even that. In Allah, Allah, Kulashain Qadir. Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has all the power, He can do everything. Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatakum la ta'alamuna shayya. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken you out from the wombs of your mothers in a state that you knew nothing. 
No knowledge. When you are born, no knowledge. Then later, Vajala Lakumusama Walamsara Walafida. Then he gives you the hearing and the sight and inferring, the faculty of inferring. Mostly the translators of Quran translate Afida as heart. I differ. Afida is the faculty of inferring and getting results logical, logically. This computer here in our brain. This is actually afida. This heart is another thing. It has also an intellect. It also understands. Because this is the abode of our ruh, of our spirit. And the spirit has its own eyes. So heart sees, heart listens and hears, and heart reflects. All these faculties are there with heart also, because they are actually the functions of the ruh. The abode of ruh is our heart. But here when with Sama and Basar it comes, Afida, it is the faculty of inferring. You have seen something, then you saw another thing, now you infer. Compare the two, and a third result you get due to your inferring faculty. Allah has given you all this. Sama, Basar, and Fuad, so that you be grateful and you be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alam yarao ila tayre musakharat ili hai jab is sama. Then they don't they look to the birds who are supported in the vault of the heaven, in the atmosphere. They are supported. Ma yum sikuhun na illallah. Who is supporting them? None but Allah. Inna fi zalik al ayat ili qawmi yuminun. Verily, in this is, there are the signs for those people who believe. Wallahu jala lakum min buyutakum sakanun. You see the bounties, you know, and the, the Allah, mercies of Allah, and all these. How much detailed description of these. And this is, as I told you, this is the most profound surah of Quran regarding this subject. At tasqeer bi ala illa. About which, you know, that question is asked 31 times in Surah Al-Rahman. Fabi ayya ala irabbikuma tu kasibad. Here the question is not being asked. But actually it is implied. These are the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which one of these bounties are you going to deny? Wallahu ja'ala lakum min buyutikum sakanun. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made in the form of your houses a place of repose and abode. Wa ja'ala lakum min junudi lanaam e buyutan. And he has made for you from the skins and hides of the cattle, of the animals. Tents, you know, those houses you, you carry from here to there, the nomads, they have the houses. These houses of yours, which are made of the hides of animals, these are very light. On the day of your camping and on the day of your journeying, traveling, they are very easy to carry. You just take off the, the tent and you roll it and put on the back of the camel and go. And then wherever you want to camp, well, get it from the, the back of the camel and you know, there are the pegs and the tent and the house is ready. Wallahu ja'ala lakum in buyutakum sakanan wa ja'ala lakum min jirudi ladame buyutan tastakhifunaha. They are very light. Yawma zanikum wa yawma yaqamatikum. On the day of your march and traveling, and on the day when you want to camp. And from their wool, now these three, three words, please note them. Wool from the sheep, this is aswaf, suf. The singular is suf, and the plural is aswaf. And that is the hair from the skin of the sheep. And then there are awbariha, they are the fur of camels. Number three, wa ash'ariha, hair of the goats. These are the three sources from which, you know, then people, then they weave, and then they make the camp, you know, blankets, etc., etc. Assassin, in these things, you make your furnishings, wa matan ilahin, and enjoyment and using these things for a long period. وَاللَّهُ جَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِمَّا خَلَقَ ظِلَالًا 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made for you shade out of which he has created. There is a tree and it has a shade and you can take rest in its shade. وَجَعْلَ لَكُمْ مِنَ الْجِبَالِ أَقْنَانًا And in the mountains he has made for you places to hide, places to, keep, to take refuge. If you know a big torrential rain is coming and you are in some mountainous region and you sit down in some cave. So this is the place for hiding and this is the place of safety for you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you trees which give shade to you. وَجَعْلَ لَكُمْ مِنَ الْجِبَالِ أَقْنَانًا then he has given you places to hide and rest in the mountains. وَجَعَلَ لَكُمْ سَرَابِيلَ تَقِيكُمْ And he has given you coats which protect you from the warmth, the sun. وَسَرَابِيلَ تَقِيكُمْ بَاسَكُمْ And coats which protect you during your war, when you are fighting. The armor, armor Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because it was first made by Hazrat Dawood alayhi salatu wa salam. He was the first person to make this armor out of, out of steel, out of, you know, iron. So, وَاللَّهُ جَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِمَّا خَلَقَ ظِلَالًا وَجَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنَ الْجِبَالِ أَكْنَانًا وَجَعَلَ لَكُمْ سَرَابِيلَ تَقِيكُمُ الْحَرْ وَسَرَابِيلَ تَقِيكُمْ بَاسَكُمْ كَذَلِكَ يُتِمُّ وَنِعْمَتَهُ عَلَيْكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُسْلِمُونَ In this way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making and perfecting His blessings for you. So that you should surrender to him. To Allah, I surrender myself. In the Islam to Wajhiya Lilladi Fatara Samawati Wallarda Hadifa. That is the purpose. You should understand these bounties, uh, these mercies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in giving him thanks, you should prostrate before him. And you should obey him. You should take him as your master. Fain Tawalla, Fain Nama Alaikal Balagul Mubi. Now, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even after hearing all this, they turn their faces away. They go. They don't accept. Then on you is no responsibility except of conveying to them. Your work is done. You have recited these ayat to them. They have listened. Your work is done. Your responsibility is fulfilled. Now it is a matter between them and Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring to the book and will punish them. يَعْرِفُونَ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ سُمَّ يُنْكِرُونَهَا They know and they acknowledge and recognize the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then they deny them. وَأَكْسَرُهُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ And most of them are ungrateful, unthankful. وَيَوْمَ نَبْعَسُ مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ شَهِيدًا Now just recall the day when we shall raise from among every community a witness. This subject we have already read in Surah An-Nisa. فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جَيْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجَيْنَا بِكَ عَلَىٰ هَوْلَاءِ شَهِيدًا On the day of judgment, before individual accountability, there is going to be an accountability of the ummas, of the communities. And first of all, the messenger who was sent to that ummah, he will stand up and he will testify before Lord, Oh Allah, your message which came to me through Jibreel, I had conveyed to them. Now they are responsible. So this is, you know, a, a, a witnessing of the messengers of Allah against their people. Because now they have no excuse. They can't plead ignorance. They can't say, Oh Allah, your message was not conveyed to us. They will testify. Yawma nab'asu min kulli ummatin shaheedan. ثُمَّ لَا يُوذَنُوا لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَلَا هُمْ يُسْتَعْتَبُونَ And then after that, these people who disbelieve, who have rejected the idea, rejected the faith and iman, that they will not be allowed, nor they will be given a chance to apologize. No apologies. Time has gone. No repenting over here useful. وَإِذَا رَا الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا الْعَذَابِ And when these evildoers will see the chastisement before they are before their own eyes. فَلَا يُخَفَّفُ عَنْهُمْ وَلَا هُمْ يُنْذَرُونَ Then this chastisement will not be neither lightened for them, nor it will be, they will be respited. وَإِذَا رَعَ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا شُرَكَاهُمْ It's very interesting scene now. 
when these people who are associating others with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who are committing shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will see those whom they thought that they are the partners with Allah. Maybe somebody, he spots, there, there, there is Sayyid Abdul Qadir Jilani. Or there is the saint, you know, for whom we had carved an idol. All the idols of Hazrat, the people of Hazrat Anu alayhi salatu was salam, were carved as representing this, the saints who had died. Or Ya Allah, they were the saints. They were good people. But after they died, they made, you know, the idols in their names. So now they see, there is the person, or that is the angel, which I used to worship. When these people, Mushrikeen, these people who were declare somebody, declaring somebody to be partner with Allah, when they will see their partners, they will cry out, Oh Allah, they are the shuraka, they are the partners whom we, we, we were worshipping along with you. But those saints or angels will retort back saying, you are lying. We don't know that you were worshipping us. You are liars. In the kum lakazibun. And that day, they will offer all their submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whatever they had fabricated, that will go away from them. They have to be lost. الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَصَدُّوا عَنْ سَمِيلِ اللَّهِ زِدْنَاهُمْ عَذَابًا فَوْقَ الْعَذَابِ بِمَا كَانُوا يُسْتَدُونَ Now there is another category. One is a kafir himself. And the other one, not only that he is kafir himself, he is calling other people also to commit kufr. Just as if a Muslim is a good man, he is doing good deeds, well this is one level. But a person who is not only doing good deeds himself, he is Yamur bil Maruf wa Yanhan il Munkar, exhorting people to do good deeds and forbidding them from bad. So he is at a higher level. So in the same way, at a higher level will be the kuffar. Allazina kafaru wa saddu an sabirillah. Those who committed kufr themselves, they rejected the faith and the call of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa saddu an sabirillah. And they barred others also from accepting the faith and call of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Zidnahum azaban fawq al azab. To such people we shall go on increasing chastisement, over chastisement, or more increasing chastisement. Bema kanu yufsidun. Because they were spreading corruption and they were making people, calling people towards the wrong way. Wa yawma nabasu fi kulla ummatin shahidan alayhim. Again, the same thing. Recall the day when we shall raise from every community a witness from among them who will testify against them. Min anfusahim. Wajayna beka shahidun ala haulai. And we shall bring forth you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to testify against these people, your nation, who were Quraysh, nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His kith and kin. This is your nation, this is your tribe. But on the day of judgment, you will have to stand and testify before the Lord that, oh Allah, I had conveyed to them your message. Now they are responsible. They can't plead ignorance. And we have sent down this book on you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which explains everything. Wahudan and is a guidance, wa rahmatan and a mercy, wa bushra lil muslimin and it is a glad tidings for those who submit themselves to the will of Allah. Allahumma rabbana jalna minhum. May Allah include us among them. Inna Allah ya murabil adli wa lihsani wa itaiz al qurba. This is a very profound ayah and you must be hearing it every Friday. You know the First part of the Juma sermon ends with this ayah. In Allah ya amru bil abli wal ihsani wa itai dil qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal baghi. Very profound and actually 
in the now the surahs that are to going to come the, the details of these six things we shall find in surah bani israel verily allah commands you number 1 to justice number 2 adopting beautiful behavior ihsan number 3 wa itai dil qurba and giving help to kinsmen relatives adl number 1 justice adopting a very beautiful attitude and number 3 number 3 giving help to the needy amongst your relatives wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkar wal baghy and he forbids you from all sorts of indecencies fahsha is the plural of fahsh all forms of indecencies and number 2 munkar everything which is hated and abhorred by the human nature nature tells us this is bad this is bad very you know the very nature of every person tells him this is bad to tell a lie is bad to break a promise is bad to be disrespectful to your parents is bad everybody knows it you need not be told these things are there, ingrained in the human nature alhamaha fujuraha wa taqwaha these are there so anil fashai wal munkar wal baghi and transgression and oppression of any kind so three things allah subhanahu wa taala has commanded us to do and three things he has forbidden us from adl justice and most beautiful attitude in life and number 3 giving your wealth to the needy among your relatives and kith and kin and you have to abstain from what all forms of indecencies all everything which is abhorred by human nature and all forms of transgression and oppression ya ayyukum la'allakum tadakkarun he is exhorting you he is giving advice to you so that you may be admonished wa afu ba'dillah idha ahadtum and fulfill the covenant of allah when you have made a covenant with him first of all this covenant we made as spirits with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ala astu bi rabbikum qalu bala then a covenant is made when somebody accepts the call of a messenger there is a covenant misaq the sharia that the messenger brings you have to obey the sharia that is the another covenant so covenant after covenant qafu bi ahdillah idha ahadtum you must fulfill the covenant that you have made with allah wala tanqudu al-aymana ba'da tawqidha and never break the the promises made the confirming their your oaths never break your oaths after confirming them wa qad ja'altum allah alaykum alaykum kafila while you have made allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is a surety over that that agreement that you have made in the name of allah you have entered into agreement with some fellow person now allah is witness over it ja'altum allah alaykum kafila inna allah ya'lamu ma tafalun verily allah knows what you are doing ولا تكونوا كالتي نقضت غزلها من بعد قوة انكاسها and don't become like that old lady who used to break the thread after firmly spinning it there is a simile an old lady spinning the thread and then in the evening breaking it up into pieces now this simile actually is for the jews for bani israel they were waiting for the last messenger of allah subhanahu wa taala but when the last messenger of allah came then they swore that we will not accept him so actually all the the thread that they had spun they have broken it off they were waiting for the for the last messenger of allah subhanahu wa taala tattakhiduna aymanakum dakhalan bainakum you have taken your oaths as deceiving as deception amongst you an takuna ummatun hi arba min ummatin only fearing less another ummah becomes more prosperous than your ummah what they were fearing 
we were the ummah we were the ummah of allah we were the ummah of moses we had with us the book torah we had the law mosaic law this is our position now another ummah is coming up on the basis of the messenger of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam let this ummah becomes you know comes up and it is higher than us this is the real reason due to which they never accepted muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam although quran says in more than one places yarifunahu kama yarifuna abnahum they had recognized muhammad just as they recognized their sons nobody can commit a mistake in recognizing his own son but just as they recognized their sons they recognized muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but they decided and they swore they took oaths that we are not going to accept ولا يبي ولا يبينن لكم يوم القيامة ما كنتم فيه إنما يبلوكم الله به. Actually, Allah Taala is testing you over this. If you are faithful to Allah, you must accept the messenger which Allah has sent. So it is a test. You are being tested. إنما يبلوكم الله به. Allah is actually testing you in this. ولا يبين أن لكم يوم القيامة ما كنتم فيه تختلفون. In all the day of judgment, he will make it clear and plain for you in all those matters in which you are differing. ولا شاء الله ولا جعلكم متن واحدة. Had Allah willed, He would have made you all one ummah. There would be would would have been no ummah of Moses and no ummah of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. Allah, if He had designed so, and if He had decided so. He could make all humanity one ummah. Walau shaa Allahu la jaala kum ummatan wahida kan. Walakin yudilu man yasha wa yahdi man yasha. But this is the rule of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He sends astray whomsoever He likes, and guides to the right path whomsoever He likes. Walatus alun na amma kun tun ta malun, and you will definitely be questioned about what you are doing. Your attitude today, it will be decisive. For your future in the life hereafter. ولا تتخذوا إيمانكم دخلا بينكم فتزيل لا قدم بعد سبوتها. And don't take your oaths as a deceit among you. You know the people, the chieftains of Quraysh, they swore by Allah to impress upon their common people, their public, that we are honest. We want to know what Muhammad has to say. As we read, you know, in Surah Al-Anam, if he is a messenger of Allah, he should fulfill our demand. He should show the miracle, the visible miracle. He should, we, we should find in the next Surah, Surah Bani Israel, the list of their demand. There should be a palace should appear here in Makkah for you, or a garden should be there, and you know, the rivulets should be flowing in that garden, or you should ascend to the heaven. And we should see that you are ascending, and then you should come down with a book in your hands, which we shall touch and see. Really, it is the book. So you fulfil any of these, these demands, and we will accept you as messenger of Allah. So they used to swear by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, but we are sincere, only to deceive and lead astray their masses, their common people, who look to them for guidance and for lead. ولا تتخذوا إيمانكم دخل بعدكم فتذل لقدم بعد سبوت هذا بيبي a person had come to understand and he was leaning and he was preparing to accept and accept the call of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم but then you know such things happened and he goes away he goes back وتذوقوا وتذوقوا سوء بما صدقت من سبيل الله then you will have to taste the evil results Of your leading people astray from the way of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, Allah Kum Azabun Azim, and there will be a very big chastisement for you. Allah Tashtaru Bi Ahdillahi Samanan Kalila, and don't barter the covenant of Allah with a very small price. This world, and you are selling the covenant of Allah against some riches, some gains, some benefits of this world. Which is nothing, as compared to the life of hereafter. It is nothing. 
ولا تشتروا بعهد الله ثمنا قليلا انما عند انما عند الله هو خير لكم ان كنتم تعلمون وات ايفر از ذير وذ الله سبحانه وتعالى اور تو ماچ بيٹر فور يو اف يو هاف دي ريل نالج اف يو كان انڈرسٹينڈ دي ريل ثينگز ما عندكم ينفض وما عند الله باق وات ايفر از وذ يو ويل كم تو ان اند وات ايفر از وذ الله it will remain forever it is lasting wala najzian alladhina sabaru ajrahum bi ahsan ma kanu ya'malun and will surely and definitely reward those people who persevered according to the best of their actions that they, that they used to do the every person if although he is doing good things but there is something bigger good a smaller good but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fix the level of a person in jannah or according to the highest good deeds that he was doing not the lower deeds maybe some deeds are good but at a lower level but there are good deeds at a higher level so the level in jannah will be decided of, of these believers according to the highest good that they were committing and they were doing man amila salihan min zakarin aw unsa wa huwa mu'minun fala nuhyiyannahu hayatan tayyiba whosoever does good deeds whether be a male or a female min zakarin aw unsa wa huwa mu'minun but he or she should be a believer that is good deeds without iman meaningless good deeds with iman wa huwa mu'minun man amila salihan min zakarin aw unsa wa huwa mu'minun fala nuhyiyannahu hayatan tayyiba we shall definitely give them a goodly life in this world also in the hereafter we will give them what we will give them but here also in this world they will be contented they will have peace of mind the peace in their heart they will be pleased with allah subhanahu wa taala so actually this is the best life that a human being can be given لَنُهِيَنَّهُ حَيَاتٌ طَيِّبَةٌ وَلَنَجْزِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ بِأَحْسَنِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And again the same thing. And we shall reward them according to the best needs of theirs that they were doing. فَإِذَا قَرَاتَ الْقُرَانَ فَاسْتَعِشْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ So when you recite Quran, so first of all, take refuge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala مِنْ سَتَنْ From Satan, the accursed. This is the command of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Whenever we have to recite Quran, first of all, Awwazu Billahi Min Ash-Shaytani Rajim. Then Bismillahi Rahmani Rahim, and then go on. For if I read the Quran, first I read Bismillahi Min Ash-Shaytani Rajim. Inna Hu Laysa Lahu Sultanun Ala Lazina Amanu. He that is Satan has no authority over those people who believe. Wala Rabbihim Yatawakkalun. and who have put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala people who believe in Allah and they have put all their trust in him satan satan cannot deceive them satan satan cannot lead them astray satan has no authority over them inna ma sultanuhu ala alladhina yatawallahu his authority is over those people who become friends of satan themselves befriend him he be, they become their their his friends walazina hum bihi mushrikun and those who take to assigning partners and equals to allah subhanahu wa taala over them satan has the authority he will take them anywhere he likes but the person who has real iman and the person who has all the trust in his lord in his rabb in his allah well satan cannot do any harm to him وَإِذَا بَدَّلْنَا آيَةً مَكَانَ آيَةٍ And when we substitute one آيَةٍ in place of another آيَةٍ You know, this substitution of آيَةٍ is in two ways. There was some commandment of Allah in the Mosaic law, law of Moses. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has changed it. The rules and regulations for fasting in that former Sharia were different. The rules of fasting in this Sharia are different. Now, because they 
actually they themselves left Friday and adopted Sabbath, Saturday as the sacred day. It was allotted to them. Okay, go. But for us it is Juma. So there is a substitution of commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then also in the lifetime of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, commands were changed. For example, at one time it was imperative that every person who is leaving behind some wealth must make some will for the parents, for the relatives, for the poor. It was imperative. It was first. Kotiba alaykum iza hadara hadakumul mautu in taraka khairan il wasiyatul il waladene wal akramin. It was nothing. But when the law of inheritance came in Surah Al-Nisa, well, this thing was removed. Now it is not necessary. The inheritance will be divided according to the law of Sharia. So in this way, we, these commandments have been changing. But you know these people, they were objecting to it. When we change an ayah and substitute another ayah in its place, and Allah very well knows what He is sending down. They say, oh Muhammad, you are fabricating things from your own mind. While the reality is that most of them don't know, they don't have the knowledge. Tell them, this Quran has been sent down on my heart through Ruhul Quds, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost of the Christian dogma. They call Jibreel Holy Ghost and they have included him in the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son and the Holy Ghost. Originally the Trinity was, Trinity was God the Father, God the Mother, God the Son. Mary was included as a deity in the Trinity originally, but later on they changed it. But this Ruhul Quds, Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam, he has sent down, Nazzalahu Ruhul Quds, with Rabbika, from your Lord, with Haq, with Truth, that you submit and Nazina Amanu, so that he confirms and strengthens those who believe, wa hudam wa bushlanil muslimin, and a guidance, and a good tiding for those who submit themselves to the will of Allah. وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّهُمْ يَقُولُونَ إِنَّمَا يُعَلِّمُهُ بَشَرُ And we very well know, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that these people are saying that actually a human being is teaching him. They used to say that there is some slave from some Syria, etc., whether he is a Jew or a Christian, but he is a knowledgeable person. He knows the old scriptures. And he dictates something to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Muhammad comes and says, this is the revelation which has come to me today. This was what they said. وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّهُمْ يَقُولُونَ إِنَّهَمَا يُعَلِّمُهُ بَشَرٌ We very well know that they say that actually a human being is teaching Muhammad all these things. لِسَانُ الَّذِي يُلْهِدُونَ إِلَيْهِ عَجَمِيٌّ وَحَاذَا لِسَانُ الْعَرَبِيٌّ وَبِينَ the tongue and language of the person to whom they are the alluring, alluding, that is foreign language, not Arabic language. If he is a Jew from Syria or if he is a Christian, Arabic is not his tongue. While this Quran is in the language of Arabic, which is very plain, very clear, 100% correct. Inna nazina la yuminuna bi ayatillahi la yahdihim. Verily, those people who do not believe in the ayat of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to lead them to the right path, and for them is a very painful chastisement. Evil and wrong fabrications are done by those people who don't believe in the ayat of Allah. Actually, they are the liars. They are the ones who tell lies. Man kafara billahi min baad iman hai illa man ukriha wa qalbuhu mutmainun bil iman. Walakin man sharaha bil kufri sadran. Fa alayhim ghalabu min allahi wa lahum azabu nalim. Whosoever, after accepting iman, becoming a mu'min, and then he turns to kufr, which we call irtidad, if he becomes a murtad, then for him, you know, there is the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a very big chastisement 
except the one who has been forced to do it. And only to save his life, he says something, which is, which denotes kufr. But in his own heart and chest, he is steadfast on iman. So this is actually a concession that Allah gives to people who are weak. There are strong people who can give their lives, and they are not ready to say even at one word of kufr from their tongue. But there can be some weak people. Only to save their life, they can say something which the others may say, think that he has become a kafir now. But he is in his heart, in his chest, he is steadfast on iman. So he is an exception, but whosoever chooses it, and whosoever is contented with kufr now, then for him there is the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a very big chastisement. And this is because they loved the life of this world more than the life of the hereafter. And verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't lead to the right path those people who are ungrateful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the guidance. You should be thankful to Him. And you should be ready to risk your lives for that truth, for that haq that has come to you, that has dawned upon you. Because this life is going to end. If not today, tomorrow. If not tomorrow, day after. Why to save your life, you say something which is kufr, which amounts to becoming a kafir after becoming mu'min. So the thing should be that one should be ready to lay down his life. But for the weaker people, there is a concession. If they save, if they can save their lives by uttering some sentences by which the enemies would be satisfied that, okay, now leave him. He has become a kafir. Then it is allowed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not bring him to book. Those people who love the life of this world more than the life of hereafter, they are the people on whose, on whose hearts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put a seal. Not only on their hearts, but also on their sights, on their hearing. And verily, they are the people who are unawares of the real facts. La jaramandahum fil akhiratuhumul khasirun. And there can be no doubt that in the akhirah, in the hereafter, they are the losers. They are doomed. There will be nothing for them. Summa inna rabbaka lilladina hajaru min baadi maafutinu. Then your Lord is in favor of those, and He is merciful to those who made hijrah. Who migrated from Makkah to Medina? Min baade maafutenu. After that, they were persecuted and tortured. Sum majahadu wa sabaru. And after coming over to Medina, then they made jihad for the cause of Allah, and they persevered in the way of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. In the Rabba ka min baade hal agafuru rahim. After this attitude of theirs, your Lord is definitely for them forgiving and merciful. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات مزدك الحكيم الله أكبر الله أكبر The Islamic Organization of North America, Iona, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. 
The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at t-a-n-z-e-e-m dot u-s or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.